All right, thank you for joining us for this Bible study. You know, there comes a point in time when a nation crosses the point of no return. And sometimes I wonder if America has crossed that point. I wonder if America will ever be able to recover from the wounds inflicted upon her by the current administration as well as poor leadership in the past. And we're going to see what Micah has to say about an incurable wound when we return. If you thought the plagues God sent upon Egypt were something, wait until you see what God brings upon those who are deceived into worshiping Satan and his new world order that is arising today. I'll tell you this, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials, and yes, even the seven thunders are going to make the ten plagues of Egypt look like child's play because they are going to be the greatest earth-shattering events that man will ever witness. And more than likely, you will live to see them, for that time is drawing near as we see the nations of the world fall into economic distress and many other troubles. So find out how all this is going down by ordering our 11 DVD set on the seals, trumpets, and vials of the Great Book of Revelation. This step-by-step -step series of studies is available from our website at christianovercomers.com. And when you order this set, we will ship it to you for free and even include a free study guide that will help you understand the chronological order of these great events. Order online today at christianovercomers.com. All right, welcome back. Let us open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to pray for wisdom and understanding in this book of Micah today as we, as we start new today. And we pray for eyes to see and ears to hear so that we can be better servants of yours. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, please turn with me, if you would, to Micah chapter 1, verse 1, and it reads, The word of the Lord that came to Micah the Marastite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Now, before we get into this, let's talk about what, uh, well, first of all, what the name Micah means. His name, this, this name of this prophet means, who is like Yahweh, or who is like God? And it's set as a challenge to all of the false gods of the heathen nations that surrounded that surrounded the nation of Israel. And um, as well as those Israelites that had picked up, and there was many of them at this time, that had picked up the worship of those false gods. And many people think, oh, well, that doesn't happen today among the Christian nations of the world. That doesn't happen today in America. Oh, it doesn't? Have you ever heard of the uh, terms multiculturalism and unity and diversity constantly being pushed upon our youth as well as everybody else, whether it's your workplace, on TV, um, at school, you name it. Those are the false gods that all these prophets warned about from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation that we were not to participate in that worship. It's, it's the, the first and second commandment. And yet our people today have given in to political correctness and have allowed these ancient pagan gods to creep in again among our nation. And you may say, well, that sounds crazy. I don't see the worship of any false gods in our nation. Look at, have you, have you watched Hollywood lately? Have you watched uh, on how uh, they uh, celebrate immorality and depravity? Well, you know what? That's what was done in the name of religion back in the day among the false religions. They had their temple prostitutes. Their, um, you know, um, their houses of prostitution which isn't really much different than what we see on TV today and what's celebrated 
as uh, was celebrated and even honored as right. Speaking of uh, uh, promiscuity as well as the gay and lesbian movement. All this stuff was done in the name of false gods. That's where all the, the immorality and the depravity came from. But I'll mention this as well. Another God is creeping in among our nation and is being worshipped by many. And that's uh, the God of the environmentalism movement. The goddess Gaia or Mother Earth. That ancient God is being, um, um, I should say, uh, repackaged or recycled and presented to the people in a new way. And that is by going green. Spend all of your time worshiping the earth by paying more attention to it than Almighty God. That's earth worship. Are you going green today? Oh, we all got to be green. We got to save the planet. We got to protect the planet. But how many people uh, and how many people and how many commercials do you see on TV today that promote studying God's word? You don't see too many. You see people trying to be self-righteous by going green. Now, there's nothing wrong with not trashing the earth or, or not wanting to trash the earth or to be, uh, to be wasteful or just to be abusive. But when it's made into a religion like it is today, that is a problem. That is a problem. But I could go on and on about the false gods that we have set up in, in our land and around the world. And that's what Micah is going to address. He says, who is like God? Nobody is. Nobody is. And there is no other God that he could even compare to him because they're all false. They're vanity. They're vain. They're empty. And yet people put them in their hearts. Rather than putting Almighty God in their hearts and in their minds. So Micah here, he's seeing a vision concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Now it's important to know the historical context of this because Samaria at this time was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel and Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom because they had a civil war after the, uh, the reign of Solomon, the king of Israel, when they were united as a nation. It would be sort of like if America never reunited after the uh, Civil War. If, they, um, if, they, if, if they, the South would have won and we would have split. There would have been two kingdoms, the North and the South. Well, guess what? It did happen back in the past to our people. And they were split up into two kingdoms. And what Micah is saying here, he's got a vision from Almighty God concerning those two capital cities. Why? And what we're going to find out here is because those two capital cities were responsible. The leadership there were responsible for, for the problems um, that had crept in among the nation. Hey, and if you look out at uh, Washington, D.C. today, and you see the leadership we have there. It's pathetic. And it's no different than it was during the time of Micah. Maybe even worse. So to update this to today. This is a message directly. Given directly to Washington D.C. The capital of the, 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 the ten lost tribes of Israel. Today. Today. And if that doesn't sound familiar to you, um, follow our link on our homepage. You'll find it there. It'll say, does America equal Israel? And you'll find a wealth of information documenting the migrations of those tribes and where they are today, both in prophecy as well as uh, history. So anyways, let's continue on. Verse 2. Hear all you people. Now, let me just mention something here. Michael actually prophesied during the same time as Isaiah. Um, 
as well as, I think it's in, if you have a companion Bible, I'm going to turn over there. Um, if you have a companion Bible, Appendix 77 is, is an amazing um, appendix because it, it outlines when all of the different prophets prophesied. And you'll find out there what's neat about it is many times there were many of them prophesying at the same time. Why is that? Because God uses many different servants for many different reasons to reach different people, to perform different missions. And all of God's servants have different personalities of their own. Um, and that's just the way it is. But I think it's kind of neat to, to notice that Isaiah prof, or Micah prophesied at the same time as Isaiah, same time as Hosea, and uh just at the last year of the uh, beginning of the prophet uh, Nahum. And uh, so you see that there, Appendix 77 of the Companion Bible. And if you don't have one, um, I highly recommend it. I, I, I've had one for, I don't know, 15 years now. And I don't know where I would be without it. Um, you can get one on our website from Christian Overcomer Store. We have a link there of companion Bibles. You can find them in hardcover. You can find them in leather. You name it. But anyways, continuing on. Verse 2. Hear all you people. Hearken, O earth, and all that is therein is. In other words, hey, everybody, listen up. Listen closely. What does God have to do to get some people's attention? What does he have to do? And let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. You know, God's up in his holy temple. He's up in his throne room. And he's witnessing the things that are taking place among our nations today. Don't think he doesn't know what's going on. He's very much involved with the affairs of our nation. He sees what our people are doing. He sees where they put their time, where they put their energy. And he's taking records of it. And uh, what's important about this is this directly links up with the prophecy given in Revelation chapter 4, where God is sitting uh, amongst his 24 elders in judgment in a judgment proceeding you could think of it as the supreme courthouse of the universe and he's there with a scroll in his hand sealed with seven seals and it's a scroll that's filled with judgments and verdicts that are to be pronounced upon those who are disobedient unto god upon the nations of the earth And uh, I don't want to sound like we're pushing studies here, but uh, we do have a series of studies titled The Seals, Trumpets, and Vials of the Book of Revelation. I can't remember how many DVDs they are, they are but I think there's like eight or um, maybe even more than that. But it goes into detail of, how, of what judgments God is going to bring upon the earth for, for those who um, ignore him. Refuse to study his word and who worship the false gods of multiculturalism and diversity. So he's up in his holy temple taking note. Verse 3, for behold the Lord, you know, today you can, um, children aren't allowed to sing Christmas songs many times in public schools. But, but what do they sing? Kwanzaa songs. Yes, let's, let's, let's throw Jesus aside. Let's not mention his name. But it's okay to, have, to, to worship uh, paganism. Oh, because that's, that's something special. That's so unique. Really. If that's the attitude we're going to continue here in America, we're not going to recover from the wounds inflicted upon us. Because the recovery starts right here in God's Word. We need some leaders in Washington, D.C. to proclaim that. Rather than playing games, you know, too many people are concerned on whether uh, a politician uh, makes one little error on television or can't, 
can't, you know, um, always speak just right, just perfect, eloquently. That doesn't matter. What matters is character. Why do we let the media set our minds on who we should choose and how we should judge a politician? It should be judged on their character. What are their intentions? Do they seek Almighty God? Because, hey, they don't have to be uh, the wisest person to be a leader if God is helping them. If they seek God for counsel and God for advice. And that's what we need to get back to, the basics. Too many people are saying, oh, we need somebody really intelligent to be up there. To be leading us. Hey, I got news for you. Man's intelligence is as foolishness when it comes to the intelligence of Almighty God. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. What were these high places? They were places where the Israelites as participated in uh, worshiping the heathen gods in sexual orgies and things like that. You say, well, this doesn't happen today. Well, in the spiritual sense, yes, it does. Because they participate in accepting unity and diversity. You know, America was founded as a, a free nation, a free Christian nation, with the right to worship as you please. But you know what? The intent of our forefathers um, wasn't that we allow every form of paganism to creep in and destroy our nation, to transform it or to change it like our current president wants to do. Oh yeah, he claims he's a Christian. But if you look at his fruits, you will know that uh, his main aim is to, to, is to strip Christianity from our nation. In fact, one of the first things he proclaimed after becoming uh, um, after taking his his oath of office was that America is no longer a Christian nation and what kind of a Christian would do that when presidents beforehand had always proclaimed that this was a Christian nation as well as the Supreme Court these are very serious times when God says he's coming down out of his place out of his temple he means it. And you know what? You won't hear these messages taught all that much in churches today. All you hear is feel-good sermons. You know, uh, church is just trying to get uh, people's tithes, people's offerings. By soothsaying them. Because they say, oh, if we talk about that, we're going to offend people. And they're not going to want to come to church anymore. Hey, you know what? If I offend somebody teaching God's word, and they don't want to listen, we don't want them to listen. Because we don't need them. We need true servants of God who want to hear God's word, whether it corrects you or not. Whether we like it or not. Because it's God's word. And that's what's important. And the mountains shall be molten under him. They're going to melt. And the valleys shall be cleft. They're going to split in two as wax before the fire. And as the waters that are poured down a steep place. Like a rushing uh, current breaking for, breaking the rocks even. What does, this, what does this show us? Well, you'll find a similar account of this in Revelation chapter 6 verse 14. In the uh, sixth seal. Um, was it the, yeah, I believe it was the sixth or seventh seal. The sixth seal. Where there's going to be a great shaking coming, a great change. And you know what? God's done it before. Hey, look at the earth. The scars are there. You know, I was driving uh, a few years back. I was driving through um, New Mexico and Arizona. And there, and I believe it's uh, Arizona, was uh, Meteor Crater. Where you could you could see that there is this great this great meteor that had impacted that area and must have caused great destruction long long ago and also in that area there is the petrified forest we're in the middle of a desert there are huge 
trees that are petrified, ancient trees turned into stone. What does that tell you? Well, sometimes God has, has, has moved and has changed things. He can change a lush forest into a desert. Just like that. And you know what? When I was there at that petrified forest, looking out at the remnants of those uh, petrified uh, trees, it made me feel as though I was on an ancient battlefield. An ancient battlefield where Almighty God stepped in to do some correction. And He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. He's not too happy with what's going on. He's not too happy with our leaders in Washington, D.C. I don't care if they're Republicans or Democrats or what they are. If they're not seeking God's counsel, His advice, like our forefathers did when they built this nation, they're worthless. We need to get rid of them. Vote them out of office. For the transgression of Jacob is all this, and for the sins of the house of Israel. Look at them. Look at them today. Look at our people. They don't have time for God. They're too busy entertaining themselves. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Look at it. What he's saying, hey, where, where are the transgressions taking place mainly? Who's helping bring this about? Are they not in Samaria? That was the capital of the northern tribes. You know, leadership has a great effect upon the people. And when poor leadership is in place, the people follow in suit. They become like their leaders. In fact, we're the ones that vote our leaders in. So oftentimes, whether we like it or not, the leaders reflect who we are as a people, who we are as a nation. So when we look out at, at the leadership we have today, hey, that's, that's like looking at, looking at ourselves in the mirror. Not, not us who love studying God's Word, not you who are pay attention, but as a nation. And what are the high places? These are these groves. These are the places where these sexual orgies took place in the name of the false gods. You know, kind of reminds you of the hippie flower child type crowd. The New Agers, same people, same worship. It reminds you also of the, uh, you know, the same type of people who occupy Wall Street. The same type of people. Are they, okay, so he's, he, he's pointing out the two capital cities. Hey, that's where the trouble stems from. Verse 6, therefore I will make Samaria as an heap of the field and as the plantings of a vineyard. And I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley and I will discover the foundations thereof. And you know what? If you go to Samaria today and visit it today, it's still in ruins. And many times when God has judged a city, it has never been inhabited before. It has never become a great city again. And this is what happened. God turned it into stones. He demolished that capital of the northern ten tribes of Israel. And you know what? I think God sent a little warning to Washington, D.C. here in the last year with that earthquake. It did a little damage. Did a little shaking to that city. Did they pay attention? Probably not. Probably not. Verse 7, and, and all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces. God doesn't like that. He's a jealous God. He doesn't like it when people put other things before him. And all the hires thereof shall be burned with fire, and all the idols thereof will I lay desolate. 
For she gathered it of the hire of an harlot, and they shall return to the hire of an harlot. You know, they got all their things by, by, by harlotry, by idolatry. And you know what? Everything that they gained through that uh, method is going to is going to be taken away from them. And you know what? In the, in the sense here, it's saying that um, we're going to find out here that God is going to send the Assyrian Empire against his people here historically to, to punish them. To punish them for their transgressions. And what he's saying is, hey, they're going to take all their idols out of their houses. They're not going to have anything left. And, and you know what? They're going to return to an higher and higher because they're going to be used by those idolaters, those Assyrians themselves. They're going to be reused again. Verse 8, therefore will I wail. Now this is, this is uh, Micah speaking here. A true prophet of God. He says, therefore will I wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the dragons and mourning as the owls. Now, the Moffat Bible has this translated a little bit better here. He, he, he translated it as, I will go howling like a jackal and wailing hoarsely like an ostrich. In other words, he was going to howl and cry about what was going on to his people to the point that his voice would become hoarse. And I know many of you today listening would like to do the same. I don't know if you want to get stripped. I don't know if you want to strip yourself naked and go running down the street doing this. It probably wouldn't be a good idea because you would probably end up in a mental institute or something like that. You see, times are a little bit different then. They got the message then. But I know many of you would like to um, cry out for what's happening to America today. And yet we have neighbors and friends who have no idea what's going on or no idea how close America is to destruction. How close our wounds are to, um, to uh, a point of no return, to a point of incurability. You know, right before the Assyrians came and, and historically came and took the Israelites, hey, they kept living it up. They thought every day was going to be a new day. And that's the point we are at in America today. Hey, it could happen overnight where we could be stripped of our freedom, of our, uh, of our, of our wealth, even of our food supply, in an instant. And yet many people live on unprepared not paying attention. These are very serious times, my friend. Very serious times. If you look at just, if you're paying any attention to what's going on with the economy and the troubles around the world, we are at a very volatile point in history, more volatile than ever before. Because we are just nearing that time when the Assyrian of the end times, the Antichrist, will come in and take over because of the transgressions of the people around the world. So Mike is going to howl and cry and, and, and strip himself naked. You know, he does this as to, be, to strip yourself naked. What would happen many times historically is that the conquerors of a nation would strip down their... their uh, captives naked to kind of shame them to make them feel um, degraded to make them feel as though that to make them know that they were subjects to them now it, it was it was a it was a show of disgrace and um, that was the symbol that's why Michael was going to strip himself naked and wail and howl because that's what the people were going to be doing when they were taken into Assyrian captivity. They were going to go there stripped, naked, howling for depression 
and anxiety and pain because they were now slaves. They were now captives. And that's why he did it, as a sign and as a warning. Verse 9, For her wound is incurable, for it has come unto Judah. He has come unto the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem, even to the capital city. The enemy would march right in. And I feel that this even happened as a type, prophetically, fulfilling the prophecy of Deuteronomy 28 about the stranger that would live among us, would get up very high above us. And I believe that happened with the election of Barack Hussein Obama. I believe that happened. The enemy entered into the gate. That person who seeks to destroy America became the very head of our nation. He's in our White House today. Verse 10. Declare ye not at Gath, weep ye not at all in the house of Aphra. Roll thyself in the dust. Okay, this is, Aphra means uh, the dust house. In other words, he's doing another show, he's doing another sign here for the people. Now he's, you know, naked and howling and he's rolling himself in the dust. Micah. What does he got to do to get their attention? What do we have to do to get the people's attention today? Verse 11, Pass ye away, thou inhabitant of Sapphir. And now what we're going to see here is Micah is going to start north of Jerusalem, and he's going to mention five different cities. And he's going to be telling them basically, hey, the enemy's coming. The enemy's going to take you. And then he's going to go south of Jerusalem to five cities south of them. And he's telling them the enemy is coming as well. What enemy are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the Assyrians historically. But, and historically, the Assyrians were actually one of the heads of the seven-headed beast of Revelation chapter 13. And you know what? That's the same beast who's going to raise up another head in the future called the New World Order, the kingdom of the Antichrist, that's going to come in. It's going to come in and take our people captive for their sins, for their transgressions, for their rebellion against Almighty God, for stripping God out of our schools, for for allowing people to strip God of our, out of our vocabulary, out of our courthouses, out of our nation, away from our youth. And put in its place multiculturalism and diversity. Sounds so great, huh? It's all tall. We've got to be tolerant. But we don't tolerate Christians. You see, that's their dirty little secret. Promote every and every, any and every other religion and say it's acceptable, acceptable but uh, we don't want anything to do with Christianity. Pass you away, thou inhabitant of Sephir, having thy shame naked. You're, you're going to go into captivity stripped and naked. The inhabitant of Zanan came not forth in mourning of Bethesel. Okay, he was... They were, all those people there, they were too distraught. They were terrified, stayed in their houses because of the Assyrians. He shall receive of you his standing. They're going into captivity as well. Twelve, for the inhabitant of Marath waited carefully for good. They, they thought good news was coming. Hey, nothing bad can happen. We're a great kingdom. Nothing bad can happen to America. It's the same thoughts. For the inhabitant of Marath waited carefully for good news, but evil or calamity came down from the Lord unto the gate of Jerusalem, right to the capital city. I wonder if they're awake there. I wonder if they're awake in Washington, D.C., that God is about to move. They're too busy playing games. 
feeling like they have great power. But I got news for you. All the games and power they're trying to grab right now and positioning themselves, they're going to lose it. They're not going to be the ones in power because somebody else is coming with their own power structure and it doesn't include them. And that someone else is the Antichrist. The false messiah. 13. O thou inhabitant of Lachish, bind the chariot to the swift beast. In other words, hey, try to run. Try to get out of there. You're not, you just know where to run. Not when God is sending someone against you as a punishment. She is the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion for the tra this is where the sin came. This is one of the main places where the sin came from. Lachish. This is where the Baal worship came from. The false religion. You see, God pays attention to detail. He knows where things start and he will judge according to the degree of, of, of uh, well, even a city, a place is an individual's sin. She is the beginning of the sin to the daughter of Zion. That's, that's where it came from. For the transgression of Israel were found in thee. You know, I kind of think of places like New York and uh, um, other big cities like that, where that, that Hollywood. Yeah, I guess you could place Hollywood right here. Think of how much filth enters into the minds of our people from that one little city. From that one little city that controls most of the minds of our people. Amazing. 14, therefore thou shalt give presents to Meresheth, Gath. The houses of Akzib shall be a lie to the kings of Israel. This word give presents means, uh, uh, well, it means a divorce decree. That's what it means. If you, if you check this out in the translations, he's saying, hey, uh, divorce yourself from that city. Get away from her. She's the one that gave you all the problems. The houses of Akzib shall be a lie to the kings of Israel. Now it's interesting, Akzib actually means lie town. And no doubt there's probably a bunch of traitors there in that city um, who are traitors to the house of Israel. Verse 15, yet, now again, we're talking about all these cities. Basically it would be like, hey, if today we we're going to go through all the major cities in, uh, in America today and say, hey, you're going to get yours too. Nobody's escaping. You're all in this together. Because you're responsible for the things that transpire. We're responsible today for the leaders we put in office. We can't just blame it upon them. We put them there. Our people. Hey, maybe it's not us that put them there, but it was our neighbor, it was our relative. It was those who, who don't care, who don't pay attention. Verse 15, Yet why bring an heir unto thee, and O inhabitant of Maresha? He shall come unto Adullam, the glory of Israel. He's going to come to that city. Now, this Adullam was a place that there were many caves and um, in your companion Bible, see in the side column, he believes that it should be translated, the nobility of Israel shall go or flee unto the cave Adullam. In other words, these leaders are going to go and try and hide. They're going to try to get their safety. Instead of standing upon the front lines for their people, as true shepherds should, they're going to try to take care of themselves. What kind of leadership is that? Hey, when you look at the leadership we have today, how many of them do you think are just out for themselves? To protect themselves? For their own personal gain? Verse 16, Make thee bald and pull thee for thy delicate children. Enlarge thy baldness as the eagle, for they are gone into captivity from thee. In other words, their children can be taken from you. Look at what we're doing to our children today. We've put, uh, we've put a debt burden upon them that's impossible 
That's impossible for them to be able to lift off of them. And he says, this was a making themselves bald as a ceremony of mourning. This was a heathen practice that was not to be done by the Israelites. In fact, I can't remember where it was, but it was in the book of, yeah, Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. God placed it in his law or instruct us not to do like the heathen do in mourning. Don't shave your head and cry and mourn and wail. But in this case, God's telling them to do this. Why? He's saying, hey, if you're going to act like the heathen, if you're going to celebrate multiculturalism and diversity, then you mourn like the heathen. You mourn like them too. See, God's pretty straightforward in his speech. Too straightforward for many of our churches today. For I know many of them would have heard this, this lecture today, this study in, in Micah chapter 1 and say, hey, we don't really appreciate that. We don't like that tough talking. It's just not the place. We don't have place for that in our church. You don't have place for God's word in your church. Well, then you know what? I hate to say it, but you're a pathetic imposter. You're a pathetic hypocrite. If you were to say something like that, and we have too many of them today in our churches, and it's sad because much of the problems we're seeing in our nation today is the direct result of pastors, preachers, and ministers in church systems not teaching the Word of God chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Hey, as we see here, Samaria and Jerusalem were types of capital cities today, types of where our leaderships, where our leadership resides. And God's not too happy with them. He's not too happy with them today, I can tell you that. And that's kind of what this chapter was about, warning us of the things that are coming and uh, saying that, uh, well, even back up in verse 9, it got to the point historically with the house of Israel and Judah that Micah said their wound was incurable. Is our wound incurable today in America? Well, hey, it's coming. If it, ha if it isn't already, it's getting very close. It's getting very close. How are we going to repair all the damage that's been done by this current administration is, is, uh, is something that uh, we need to think about and need to consider. It's going to take something drastic. It's not going to take uh, um, being mellow, um, you know, being a moderate. It's going to take a drastic change back to Almighty God and to the, the founding principles of this nation. If we are to avert the soon coming of the Assyrian, the Antichrist, that beast empire. Well, I was going to say I hope you enjoyed that chapter, but I don't know how enjoyable it is to read about uh, these things. It's, it's not very enjoyable, but it's necessary. But I hope you learned a lot from it. I, I hope you took the warning. And I hope our people take the warning from chapters like this. That it gets to the point where God's going to move down in judgment. He's up in his holy temple. And he's not too happy. So next, don't miss the next chapter because we're going to get in. Micah's going to go into detail. And he's going to start describing in detail what was happening. What was happening to to their people by the leadership and what the people were doing and so forth. But, uh, well, like we always say, like and like Christ said in uh, the book of Matthew, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Lord. See that you digest it, consume it, meditate upon it on a daily basis so that you can be a Christian overcomer.